Another consequence of demonising men on our screens is even more destructive. 80 men kill themselves every week in the UK, and male suicides account for more than 75% of the total. Whereas female suicides have steadily reduced since 1970, male suicides have steadily increased. From the late, 80, from the late 70s and early 80s, um, there was a huge increase um, amongst suicides. The age group of um, men between, I think, um, 24 and 35 is one of the highest groups, um, which is quite unnatural, you know, that normally you would expect it to be older men who were sort of at high risk, whereas now it's becoming younger men. And although, the, the, although rates haven't risen for the last 10 years or so, the fact that they have stabilised kind of demonstrates that there has been a change in, for some reason in, uh, that we don't fully understand. So it kind of went like that and it's sort of, that level has, it seems as if it's peaked, it's not going back down, but we're still in this level where since the 70s, more young people are taking their own lives than you would expect. It's on the increase. And it's I'm still not on the increase compared with yeah, female suicide. And I'm not surprised. What do you think is going on? Why would more and more young men be committing suicide? Well, you, you've probably got a whole range of um, different things. I mean, it, it, it's, the, it's the social pressures on young men that are making them feel bad about themselves anyhow. Um, you've got family breakdown, which affects boys quite adversely. Um, domestic violence is probably another cause of it. A whole range of things. I mean, we've had um, three cases ourselves of, of men committing suicide because of domestic violence. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. I would not like to think how many um, men actually kill themselves because of domestic violence. You know, you keep hearing about the two women are killed every week and they don't mention the fact that in actual fact 30 odd men are killed every year by their wives as well. But how many more are actually committing suicide? You know, they talk to me about how two women are killed every week in England by their partners. One man is killed, but they don't account for the three who commit suicide every week. I know those men, and I know why they kill themselves. One that Samaritans is particularly interested in is suicide in the media, um, and the strategy seeks to inform journalists about the way in which portrayals of suicide in the media can lead to, can affect vulnerable people's behaviour. For example, there was an incident in the 90s where in casualty there was a suicide, there was an, um, a paracetamol overdose um, suicide attempt. And suicide attempts using that method went up by 17% in the week following the broadcast of that programme. And there was a direct link between people who'd seen the programme and who had then gone on to take their own life in that way and who had chosen to take their own life as a consequence of that program. Regarding the increase in the use of paracetamol to attempt suicide following mm. the casualty broadcast, is that seen as a causal factor or just they happen to choose that method and they were going to take it's their own lives anyway? It's a causal factor. It's, it's, yeah, there, there is a, the, the research that is done around this is, um, is quite interesting because there, I get asked that a lot. You know, is it, is it an absolute increase that it caused or was it just a change in the methods? Um, and it wasn't that factor that got it wasn't that example that got analysed in that way. But there was another one which was called um, where a, a German TV show showed um, it was called Death of a Student. And every week at the starting credits, they showed a man being run over by a train, killing himself by being run over by a train. And suicide attempts using that method increased, but also the number of suicides increased. You know, following it, showing that it wasn't just people choosing that method; it had contributed to an actual overall increase in suicide, um, in the suicide rates. It's a difficult thing for most people to kind of grasp that actually, you know, something on TV could have a, a real and direct effect, but it, it really does, and positive reporting can totally save lives. So if the portrayal of suicide can lead to an increase in suicides, what does the portrayal of male disposability cause? What are the real world effects of the continual killing, beating, suicide and sexual violence against men in our media? But we don't seem to recognise prejudice as even a possibility with men, because men, for some reason, are not considered to be a distinct group. That's why here in The Shield, for example, male prostitutes are called hustlers instead of prostitutes. Got gay bashers going after male hustlers out on the stroll. Calling them hustlers lends the men some kind of control over their situation, like it's their chosen career. Whereas with women, they are prostitutes, innocent victims of vicious pimps. They're the same, yet we call it differently. In our private lives, it's men who walk women to their cars or front doors at night. It's men who investigate the noise downstairs in the middle of the night. What was that? I'm going, I'm going. 
If I'm killed, don't forget to return the videos. They're a day late. <laughs> It's your sense of humour I'll miss the most. <laughs> and it's men who rush to the defence of any woman in danger. Don't touch me, all right? Everything OK, Miss Donovan? Lucas, do you mind walking me back inside? Take a walk, pal. You're being paranoid. Have you um, ever walked or driven a woman home to make sure she gets there safely? Yeah. Yeah, all the time, yeah. So well, not recently, but obviously, <laughs> you know, when I was playing the field or, or whatever you want to call it. And What's the point of taking her home? Well, I, I took this girl home this morning because I don't see any other way of her getting home. I didn't want her in my flat. <laughs> <laughs> Have you done it to, in order to make sure she gets home safe? Yeah, so I think it's, it's a sort of this thing This is my to point. Yeah. When you've done that for her, what about your safety when you're getting home? <laughs> The people most at risk from violence and death on our streets are men. Men come to harm three times more often than women. And these are innocent men, men minding their own business on their way home. Amazingly, considering society's indifference to male safety, it even says this on the Crime Stoppers website. Despite the glaringly obvious fact that men are in greater danger, that twice as many men are murdered and three times as many assaulted in the UK, we instead focus on danger to females. Every advert, every poster, every public information film, every parliamentary debate, every BBC documentary, and the overwhelming majority of government funding goes towards the safety and well-being of women. Any cab, love? At last. How much is it to Ballon? If you want to know the true cost, ask a rape victim. Ten sexual assaults are committed in London every month. A bunch of women have actually set up a group of, of pink cabs where it's only driven by women and only for female passengers. And I thought, how many men would get away from setting up blue cabs driven by men only for men only? But I mean, the argument there would be safety for women, because, you know... Or safety for men? Is it safe for a man to pick a woman up? But I find that offensive. I have to say that. I mean, my son used to find it offensive when he used to be uh, at Plymouth University and they'd run late night buses and they weren't always full but only for women to get on, not the blokes. Blokes could walk through the streets and what a bloke could easily be set about by some drunkard and have his head smacked in but the buses were only laid on for the girls. And know the bus would pull away perhaps was just half full with girls and the blokes would have to walk. Yeah? So the implication is, uh, you know, the fact that you're a man is the problem. Mm. Not exactly, yeah. Of you're, a lesser, you're of lesser worth. Hard being a man today. Hard being a man today. Why is it so hard to be a man? Because nobody cares about men. Nobody gives a fuck about men. If you see a homeless man on the street with a dog, you feel sorry for the dog. <laughs> so we got to get that dog some food. <laughs> what about the man? Oh, fuck him. <laughs> so every night on TV, I see there's a new missing woman. We gotta find Carol. Where's Carol? We must find Carol. Carol didn't come home last night. Where the fuck is Carol? I never see one of these things for a missing man yet. It's like Bob didn't come home last night. Good. I hope he never comes home. <laughs>